Welcome back to Film Reel. I am Matthew Wegg, and across from me is my host, Chet Seven. Hey guys, what's up? And we have two guests with me today. Uh, to my left, I have Xander Blake, as always. Hey, yo. And his first inaugural appearance on Film Reel, it's Chris Lara. Hey, what's up, guys? All right, so before we go into the news today, we're going to talk about box office. Chet, take it away. Well, we seen we have two new arrivals this this past weekend with Magnificent Seven and Storks. <laughs> and let's see. It's a little bit rough to tell since it's still the weekend list that we're looking at here. But Magnificent Seven takes the lead with thirty four million, Storks following with twenty one, Sully with thirteen, and Bridget Jones's baby with four million. So, um, I mean, we all expected Magnificent Seven to, you know, be number one in the box office. It's a Western, directed by Anton Foucault. It was getting some fair reviews, and, you know, yay, people kind of like to watch their Westerns again. What do you think, Xander? I think that I am happy Storks did not do that well, because that sounds so stupid. Hey, well, I mean, Storks is, you know, getting a lot of good buzz as well. I, I get that. The premise just totally throws me off. It, it's the stupidest sounding movie. I just can't get over like, hey, Storks baby. <laughs> I just can't do it. Alright. Um, but something else to take notice from this is that um, <laughs> Sully dropped to number three, but only you know dropped 37%, which is good. Mm-hmm. So that movie is probably still hanging around in top five for a while. Uh, you know, the thing I'm shocked about, though, for this whole box office money is how little it's actually pulled in, it, yeah. it, comparatively to the other years. I mean, the box office this season is terrible. And, and comparatively, it's it's like you've got so many movies that nobody wants to see. Where is it going? Yeah. Where is Hollywood moving with this? Because I'm, I'm waiting for all these other movies that we know are coming out right now that we all want to see. Why didn't they come out now when it's like the season for them to drop? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Uh, Chris. Yep. Opinions. Opinions. Um, well, I'm surprised that Magnificent uh, Seven actually did good. Uh, I don't know. I, th- I thought, like, that movie wasn't going to be that well, only because there's, like, three other kinds of movies like that, like two of them being on Netflix, I think, <laughs> or uh, one of them being on Netflix. Wait, I think you just thought of Hateful Eight. Well, yeah. Well, I, I, what is the what's the stupid one? Ridiculous Six. Yeah, Ugh. I think that's the yeah. one you're thinking oh. of, man. Yeah, yeah. Ridiculous I don't think six. that counts. No, 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 no. I knew the difference between the. Oh, okay. Like, all I, I just didn't know if you were counting Ridiculous Six in there because that's. No. Uh, I don't <laughs> oh, think man. we're allowed to count that. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I'm surprised. I saw something actually on Magnificent Seven that they were shocked that it was doing really well. That <laughs> they, I don't think they thought that it was going to do good like it was or it is right now. And um, storks. So is Hollywood <laughs> ready for westerns again? I mean, hopefully. I mean, time I'd likes like to, to relapse. See, like kind of a resurgence of that genre, but they have to be done well. I just don't want to have remakes. I oh, prefer yeah. new movies about the West. That's fine. Just like, don't give me another remake again. I think it's going to be a delicate <laughs> little subject matter. What in the film business, like. Going back to the roots or yeah. being racist because it's the West? A little both, probably. Well, I mean, what we need is that we need, like, weird takes on the Western genre, like uh, Tarantino's Hateful Eight that came out last year, but also kind of like these weird neo-Westerns, like Hell or High Water, which is a great film, which you guys should she. What about uh, his other Western, Django Unchained? Ex- exactly. Kind of. Yeah. No, I've never seen that movie. Bit. Well, I mean, if we're just talking about weird <coughs> ways they can do <coughs> westerns, that was definitely one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Give me a give me a western zombie movie. That's what we need. We need to combine oh, the two genres wow. <laughs> that are totally out there and would not make any sense and put them together. That That's actually, I would love to see a western zombie movie. I That'd would be actually, amazing. Yes, yes, no, I agree with you. I'd really love to see that. That sounds really interesting. Yeah, that sounds more fun than Cowboys and Aliens. If we all remember that one, that was an all right. Actually, movie. that was an all right movie. <laughs> I like so, it. Yeah, yeah. So we ne- we need zombies. This has been proven that. Cowboys work with anything. Let's give them zombies. <laughs> let's give them pirates. Let's give them ninjas. So let's just run the whole gambit, and we will do all of them. And it'll be time amazing. Clash. Okay, they pulled the ninja thing a long time ago on TV. What yeah. is it? Shanghai Noon? No, it was uh, 
it was a 90s show called Briscoe County Junior where there was an episode that uh, they Is this had a real show? Down. Yes, it is. Bruce Campbell. Look it up. All right. And with that being said, let's move on to our first official story in the day. Chet, take us away. Transformers 5 is in the process, and a lot of uh, questionable um, things have been occurring in the shooting of this film. <laughs> One questionable topic is using Winston Churchill's mansion, I think it was, yeah. as a uh, Nazi as a Nazi base of operations. <laughs> it's so bad. Yes. Yeah. Oh god. It's such poor taste. That's really bothersome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's like slapping someone straight in the face. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, literally. Take two things into consideration. Let's not even talk about the Churchill thing just for a moment, just because. I mean, if there's one thing that I can firmly say about Michael Bay is that he's a very patriotic person. So I don't see it as a slap to the face to anybody. Um, it's a he's weird choice for America. <laughs> it's a what? weird choice, nonetheless. <laughs> but I don't see it as a slap in the face. What we really should be talking about is the fact that there, there's Nazis in a Transformers movie. More Nazis. Yeah, that's fine. They throw Nazis in anything. That's just a the genre anime. No, my problem is, see, Michael <laughs> Bay is not patriotic for other countries. It's just America. So with Britain, <laughs> f*** them, is, is Michael Bay's basic response. Whoa. Shots fired, guys. Right, put Shots fired right across the bow. Thank you, Xander. All well, right, I, anyway. Wait, I thought we were. Oh. oh, should I take that back? No. I can take it back. No. <laughs> All right. No, no, just get off topic for a second. Like, that's the thing that's more weird to me. And, you know, we're doing some time thing maybe where it's just like uh, the Nazis won this little area oh, and uh, have to fix it. I don't know. What was that movie where, like, the Nazis conquered the moon or something? Oh, right. I remember. Iron Sky. Okay, yes, yeah, that was yeah. it. <laughs> See, we, we just need more of that stuff because why not? They're Nazis. We can just throw them in anything nowadays. Mm-hmm. It's like they're just a pop culture enemy. Oh, okay. Nazis. Whoa. Nazis. Oh. <laughs> well, I want to know why it's used Nazis so much. I mean, can we come up with other historical enemies? That like sucked. No, okay, I mean you've got other like empires that were kind of you know dicks. I, I just won't know and as easy to like this interplay in any movie. Yeah, I but think there were more worse people. <laughs> I th- I think that just because um like everyone can automatically assume Nazis are evil that <laughs> it would work for anybody. Anyone could relate to it. <laughs> I think if you stuck like say Roman centurions in it, it just seemed weird. All right, this. Just bring it back full circle a little bit. Look, in this movie, we have transforming robots, robot dinosaurs, King Arthur, and yeah, now that's Nazis. the part that's confusing me. So back in like 2015, in the summer of 2015, Paramount's like, okay, we're going to bring this writer's room together. And they got all this talent. Um, Akira <laughs> Goldsman, <laughs> Stephen DeKnight, all in this writing room trying to figure out how can we make a good Transformers movie. And then it says basically Michael Bay is just like, um, I like the Nazi one, but I also like the King Arthur one. I also like this weird one with the mini Dinobots. And he just takes them and like brings them all together. Just like, just, just combine it all. That's, <laughs> that's what it feels like I to me. I swear to God, Michael Bay just takes people's childhood and just like... Michael Bay. Dips his penis in it. <laughs> he just <laughs> goes for it. He's just like, you know what? Dabble. I'm just going to just take your childhood and ream it. That's what he does every time. He just takes his own little flavor, puts it on top of whatever you liked as a kid, and presents it to you, and you're supposed to like it. Uh, I just think it's weird and bizarre. But it's it's weird and bizarre where I don't think it could work, but it's in that area where it might just be weird enough that it might actually work. I mean, there's definitely that fine line that you can cross where it's like, so weird it's good, but can Michael Bay do it? Uh, I mean, I he's know. tried to make the Ninja Turtles weirder, and it just got meh. Um. Well, okay. Yeah, I understand that. <laughs> First one's good. Second one's atrocious. Okay, opinion. but that that's my point. Is like <laughs> you're saying he's bringing all this weird stuff, but we've seen Michael Bay can't do that. So what are we supposed to expect out of this new Transformers movie? I'm uh, expecting it's going to be garbage. More oh. explosions. Yeah, more explosions. Yeah. Uh, it's Michael As Bay. Always. That's not even a thing. That's <laughs> Maybe one lens flare and a <laughs> toss of the girl's hair. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And a new love much. interest, I mean, too. Chris oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, Who it's pretty much just girl? Michael Bay in general. I mean, it's like going to have some, some gratuitous PG nudity that's not real and, <laughs> like, copious amounts of shots of troops movements hmm. and explosions. And running and yelling. Lots of yelling at Optimus Prime. Oh, and fights <laughs> that you can't understand what the heck is and going on. And Optimus Prime just, dying. Like, flipping all no, over your face. Oh, not again. <laughs> all right. It's like, um, the it's like the robot Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, Transformers, we don't really know what to expect, but what we should have all expected is that Stephen Strange would probably be in Infinity War, which is why it's weird that people are saying that he's going to be in Infinity War as like an official story, because I thought it was a no-duh statement. Shit, what do you think? Well, I mean, it's an Infinity War. Duh. <laughs> I think it's a good call, putting in another... Um, a new new character to the franchise into this affinity into this newest Avengers movie because due to civil war happening some of those characters are not going to really be present too much because if you think about it everybody's all split up and there's not enough Avengers for an Avengers movie so what do you do you call in the new ones Doctor Strange is a good choice Another good one would be to get Spider-Man. So Wolverine. <laughs> Wolverine. <laughs> no, no, Wolverine. Hey, we but, want but classic Avengers here. I know, but we no, should. But my thing is, why is, he, why is this even like something that's a story? To me, it's just like, no, duh. He's yeah. going to be in Infinity War. Well, I mean, if you know the comic book, I mean, yeah. Doctor Strange is all of the parallel universes, the Infinity Gems, all the things. Mm-hmm. He's part of every single one of those. Yeah, he is kind of connected to a good amount of what happens. In the yeah. comics, but uh, so it's kind of dumb for him not to be included. Yeah, really. yeah, they can't dumb him down too much. That's just silly. Apparently, he's also expected to appear in uh, Ragnarok a year before this film is supposed to be released. That yes, that's right. Because that multi-dimensional thing. I mean, he he gets around pretty much any universe. You could throw a Doctor. Now Strange that in is interesting. Mm-hmm. Doctor Strange appearing before Ragnarok. Well, yeah. it's not surprising though, because in the comics he's in everywhere. He's, well, he's that background okay. character that pops up. We all the get time. in the comics, but uh, you know it's. I mean, it's no longer about the comics anymore. It's really interesting that that happens in a movie because. Well, did you see it coming? I mean, if they're copying the comic book universe as much as they can. Him appearing in Infinity War is no day. Him appearing in Fort Ragnarok is more of a shocker to me than, you know, the Infinity War stuff. But it does make sense because there was um, there was leaked images a while back ago that showed Thor in New York and there was a little bit of a. Doctor Strange nod in one of the pictures that was leaked. I'm expecting just that so they're yeah. going to use Doctor Strange to bring in the X Men. That's what I think. I think that <laughs> they're going to that Fox is going to be like, you know what? We see how good they are. We, we can make more money if we just like give them their franchise back. I think <laughs> Doctor Strange will bring in Fantastic Four first, then X Men. Uh, I, I would love if anyone could do Fantastic Four justice because my God, <laughs> it's so terrible. The movies and yeah, they. Yeah, that remake was that com- was terrible. Garbage. Speaking Which one? Things, garbage. Because there was an original Fantastic Four too. That was in like the nineteen sixties. All of them by Fox. Oh man. Oh. Oh my God, it was so bad. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of things that aren't terrible, um, earlier this year, if you guys are in the video game scene, there was this little indie game called Firewatch that was released. It was a very beautiful uh, art design game. It had a story that was oh wow simple but sad, sad, melancholy, but and went through all these things with, you know, you following this character who's had some really, a really tragic backstory. If he joins a Firewatch for a summer, then weird stuff starts to happen with, like, fires and conspiracies. But what's interesting about it is that it might be a movie now. Um, according to a uh, news article in GameSpot, a, a studio is interested in acquiring the Firewatch property and making it to a movie. What do we think? Well, I mean, maybe this is the right thing because we keep seeing AAA titles being taken by movie companies and they're terrible, almost universally. Mm -hmm. Very few have actually ever come out that I'm actually willing to see. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm looking forward to it. Maybe they'll do it justice. Like, the thing is about Firewatch, and it's one of those things where it's just like one of these walk-around games, is that as we, we had like a little light conversation about this yesterday, where I don't know if the story would connect on the same level. Because when you're playing the game, you're placed into that character's like physical shoes. And from being from a different perspective, I don't know if it would connect as the same. And another thing I was thinking about is that something that's really appealing about the game is that art style. So, I mean, maybe they can make it work. I mean, it could still be like beautiful if they get like a good like cinematographer and make it look all pretty and stuff, but... I don't know. It's, the art style is really cool, and it kind of adds to that game's themes a lot. Well, the thing for me is I see it as an opportunity. Since this is not being done as a AAA title, in that no one's expecting 
they're not expecting something out of it like they are with those other games where they have to keep with exactly what was there or exactly what's going on. So you've got a totally different kind of feel for it because they can really experiment with a with a game like this. Hmm. Uh, what do you think, Chris? Honestly, I'm more thinking about audience. If they do make this into a movie, um, the only people who would probably be going to watch it would be people who have played the game, people who know what it's about. If you just release it and be like, hey, look, this is based off a video game, most people will either, one, jump on the bandwagon, start playing the game to get their background info, and or not see it at all because they don't play video games or something like that. Like mm. This is mo- mainly directed towards one set of audience people. So you're saying we'd have like another like disastrous Warcraft box office bomb <laughs> in the US? Pretty kind of much. Thing. See, I don't, I don't think it has to be that way because they can take so many more liberties. They can just pretend nothing. They can just say, hey, here's a movie. And they don't say anything about a game. Well, they yeah, just say, here's a movie called Firewatch. Go watch it. I'm also looking at looking further into the article here. I noticed that one of the reviews that they had for the actual game was a 7 out of 10. Yeah, that's sure that's a good thing for the game, but if you... Um, if you put that out there to the um, movie community, are you reading the GameSpot review? Yes, I am. More of them later. I don't. I don't really like their reviews. Uh, GameSpot's yeah. always extremely critical. Like it, yeah. a seven on GameSpot is usually like an eight or a nine on other sites. Seriously, but like, still, they're extremely critical. Like who people for people that take this like real seriously, they're, they're probably it as a gameplay though, not right. not as a, not as a story. They don't care about that. They care about the gameplay itself. For me, it, it kind of rubs me the wrong way, but I'm go- I'm going to try to ignore it as best as I can. But that's just something I wanted to voice concern about right now because that might be a um, a factor that might either boost up the the movie's popularity or bring it down when it goes into the box office reviews. And with that being said, guys, we're going to take our first break. When we come back. We're going to talk about Lionsgate and more Twilight. See you guys soon. Ugh. And we are back. Welcome back to Film Reel. I'm your host, Matthew Wegg. I have Chet, Server- Chet Severn, as always. And joining us today is Xander Blake and Chris Lara. As I said before the break, Lionsgate is considering more Twilight films. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, Chris, mm. kick us off kick us off can i kick this movie <laughs> like can we just can we I not think, i think i kind of threw up a little in my mouth yes as did i when i told you this yesterday you actually did yeah because <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm still I'm, I'm literally just like you said it again I'm like oh my god so basically it's, it, it oh, says um so taste it. according to the news site bloody disgusting <laughs> Optimum name, by the way, for this kind of story. Bloody disgusting. They're it already discussing disgusting. it internally. <laughs> oh it God. will happen. The site adds, it is still undecided exactly what the future of the franchise will be, though it could be a direct remake. But then again, it would also be a spin-off or maybe even a one-off sequel. Wait, okay, I got a question. How do you start one of those <laughs> petitions where you... You know, petition of place to stop doing something. I think it's petition.org. Yeah. Petition.org. Okay. Petition. Yeah. Can we start no. Let's Can we please start one? Please, 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 <laughs> please, 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 please. Well, I know. Has, how many peti- petitions have you guys heard of to stop something that Hollywood was trying to make? And how many times has it actually succeeded? I think this is the one that Touché. every single person in the world could get behind. No. Yeah. Okay. Most everyone who's not like a 15 year old girl still want to. <laughs> still want to be enough. <laughs> Please. Why do we need more? Or a stuff? tool? Because boyfriend. despite the fact <laughs> that these movies were god awfully horrendous, mm. they made um, a sh- so was ton the load of money. The material was god awful and horrendous. <laughs> they I think I know what Xander guys. and I are going to be doing. <laughs> ton of money. I, I don't care how much money it's made. Can the rest of us not have to suffer with it? <laughs> well, then you don't need to go watch the movie. I don't have to watch the movie. I have to hear about it. Well, so does everybody else. So. <laughs> I know. Why does everyone have to suffer this? <laughs> I mean, Chet, what do you think about this? <laughs> like Xander said, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be um, joining the uh, petition to sign that this thing <laughs> stops. <laughs> but no petition has ever stopped anything being made in Hollywood ever. I yeah, know, right. but... Can we just show them how we feel? But then you have Xander and I here that would resist. And then you have a whole billion of ex-boyfriends that were forced to break up with their girlfriend because they love the Twilight films. Did that happen to you, Chet? Because they nope. did a relationship like... What, what was her face? Kristen Bell. I don't know. Uh, Christian Stewart. Well, Kristen well, Stewart. I meant her yeah. like character name. Oh, Bella. 
Bella. Yeah. Ed, what was the other guy? Ed, Edward. Ed, Edward. Ed, okay. Ed, why Ed, do I know all this? Okay. Enough. So, w- so why is it? We do not need another like years of everyone saying they need a relationship like Ed and Bella. Yeah. No thanks. They, they, <laughs> what is it? Th- they want someone to stalk them and like brutally, like almost murder them and all plus the time. W- I'm guessing it's better than saying people want a relationship like Joker and Harley. Well, that's what I was gonna say. We I already have that type is of that relationship. <laughs> I don't know. That's They're both enough. bad. They're both terrible. Mm-hmm. Why yeah. does anyone want relationships like that? No, I don't. <laughs> well, yeah, it's the only thing is Bella and Edward had a relationship where it's like nothing. It was just like, uh, this probably shouldn't work, but you're not hurting me that much. So it's okay. Where the Joker Harley relationship is straight up abuse. Dude, it's a he's a cradle robber in in those Twilight books. The dude's what four hundred years old, and she's mm-hmm. what seventeen. Yes. Well, I mean, yeah. It's is she seventeen? I think in the first book she is. Like, like I wouldn't know. I've never see, read any of the books. Didn't see any of them. Either. Right <laughs> I refuse well, to watch. I, I know that she was in high school, so she had to be around like seventeen, eighteen. Okay, that I remember. So it's got to be. He's a vampire, so he's got to be old, like 400, 500 years old, whatever. That's disgusting. Looks like he's seventeen. That's pedophilia. 18. And here's another question for you: If they renew the Twilight movies, are they going to do the same thing to Fifty Shades of Grey? Oh God. Yeah, no. because oh. those two were like back and back to back when well, I was in high school. Well, Fifty Shades nasty. of Grey was a Twilight fan fiction, as far as I remember. Yes, yes, it was. It uh, mm. it legit is fan fiction. Oh, yeah. man. Like it, that's how it started. No, no, I mean that's, I, that's what I meant. It's legit. It is fan fiction. So it's like, ugh, God, it's so gross. Mm-hmm. The whole thing is weird and disgusting. I mean, can't they just like, if they want to listen to erotica, can't they just you know I don't know read real erotica? Why do they have to do these <laughs> fake ones that like pretend they're books? Yeah, that's why I'm saying that a lot of ex-boyfriends would probably be behind me in signing a petition to stop this from happening. <laughs> Did they have those like Harley Quinn books? Uh, aren't those the things with those? <laughs> not, 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 not the Harley Quinn. I meant, Harley like, Quinn. No, no. Harley Quinn books are these books that are romance novels that are literally just smut fests. Oh, right. Yeah. The like 30 year old women used to buy those all the time. Can't they just read those? Why does it have to be this weird vampire stalker pedophilia thing? It's so weird and disgusting and bizarre. Isn't mm-hmm. wait wait? I remember this. There's like a thing at the end where like they the daughter is with the werewolf guy, right? And the daughter's like <laughs> two years old. Oh, and and the daughter like ages rapidly, so that it's supposed to not look as creepy when Jacob just like, hey, yeah, your daughter's kind of cute. It's like what? Is it? Oh, way off. Wait, yeah, wait a minute. Is the daughter like a year or two years old? Like when he's doing that? Yeah, basically. That's so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Everything right. about it is so creepy. This is what you guys paid for, and it's why we're getting more of these horrendous movies. So I did not pay for this. Well, I no. did yeah. not. I'm pay not for talking this. to you. Know, I'm talking to our listeners who did support the movie. I don't think out. our listeners would be people who would actually listen to a film talk channel. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, you have a point. But you know, they are interested in hearing about a new Jumanji movie. Uh, what nice a new Jumanji at. movie! <laughs> so Woo-hoo. recent details have been released about regarding the new Jumanji. Movie that stars uh, Dwayne Johnson, Kevin Hart, Jack Black, Karen Gillan. Ooh. After I releasing like all those a, people, mm-hmm. after releasing a photo last week of them all on set, with most of the questions being concerned about why is Karen Gillan dressed like that? Uh, I don't mind. <laughs> Ooh, which I is what every other mind. guy is actually saying. They don't mind. But we do have some details. Along with adding four cast members: Alex Wolf, Sir Darius Blaine, Madison Iceman. And Morgan Turner. I don't know any of those people. It turns out that these are actually teenagers that are playing the video game that is Jumanji. Oh. And they're basically playing as the avatars, which were represented by Dwayne Johnson, Kevin Hart, Jack Black, and Karen Gillan. Dude, I totally want to be Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> that's uh, that's <laughs> my, that's going to be, be my avatar. I doesn't Gillen. want to be Dwayne. I'll right? stick with Kevin. I, don't. I mean, <laughs> why wouldn't you want to be millionaire, like super buff? <laughs> I'd be Karen Gillan. So Jeff Snyder. Wait, what? <laughs> 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 I mean, Karen Gillan. I mean, you're right, but you're also <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Why? Why am I wrong? So basically, this I is said you're both. So it's still a sequel to the 1994 Jumanji movie that starred Robin Williams. Uh-huh. But now That's the Jumanji piece, game is a video game, and the characters play as avatars. Is there going to be a video game about the game that's got a video game? Well, game. if we learn anything from licensing properties and video games, they don't really sell that well, so probably not. Yeah, I hope not. Unless it's like an iOS like board game, Jumanji game. No, not like even that. I would refuse to play that. I think that. it all depends on how much money the thing makes. I will yeah. say this is kind of interesting to hear from them. You know, 
the way that they're going with it because I think it is. I think it's all supposed to be like an iOS game. I I, I thought there was an actual Jumanji video game. I that, thought there was too. Was released and I think there is there a animated series. Yeah, that they released. Really? Too. Yeah. I don't know if Robin Williams was actually on that, but let's I look that up, shall there we? Actually, <laughs> is a Jumanji animated series. I used to watch that thing. Yeah. No, and you know, just seeing this is where they're taking the sequel. It's interesting. I don't know if it's going to fully pan out in the way they'd want it. It is good to know that they aren't going with kind of a rinse and repeat thing. They're just like, well, just try this little different thing, see if it works out. Nobody gets to replace Robin Williams. No one gets to replace. Nope, Robin. you can't. Do we think he's? Do you think there's going to be like a subtle nod to his character though in the movie? That would be. I don't be know. Be that might be tasteful or tasteless depending on how they do it. It'd be insensitive if, it's like if a they did. Five second thing. It's tasteful. If it's like the thing that's driving the whole movie, it's tasteless. Okay. Yeah. Did you see? Was it Furious Seven? Yeah. Mm, yes. They did that little brief cameo that they had going on. That was tasteful. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So if you did something like that, yeah, I could see it going really well. Yeah. So, uh, Chad, I mean, what do you really think about all this? Well, I'm still. I didn't know about this at the time that the four characters are actually video game avatars. So I'm kind of scarred for life <laughs> now that I'm think now I'm seeing this picture again. So, uh, which character do you want to be? I'm sticking with Kevin Hart. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you gonna pick one? Yeah, I'm gonna, the Rock, obviously. <laughs> oh come on! Because I already picked the Rock. Well, you have to be Jack, Jack Black. Black. <laughs> I'm Kevin Gillen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I know out. where your mind is, but <laughs> I whoa, 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 Chris whoa, Laura, the gender bender. What's up? I'm seriously finding it's 2016. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no offense to you guys, but I'm I'm kind of seeing a funny uh, little irony thing happening here. The short ones are going for the tall people, and the tall people are going for the short one. Wow. Well, that's because it's the <laughs> truth. All the all the tall guys always want to be short. The short guys always want to be tall. Actually, The Rock is not that tall. I know. He's, he's actually not tall at all. Yeah, I've, I've like seen him around other six. guys. Yeah, he's like really. Isn't he like standard no. male he's height? He's only two inches taller than me, so I could you know yeah I could I could be The Rock eventually. Exactly. He's like <laughs> yeah, that's not a tough character. I want to be the buff character. Okay. So are you trying to tell me I'm taller than The Rock? <laughs> yes, you are. I guess. Oh but, boy. But <laughs> you, you probably still. He's six foot four. Is okay, he? we're the same. I thought he was shorter. Six foot four. I'm six huh. five, so I'm like an inch taller than he is. Okay, see? You are taller than The Rock. Yeah. <laughs> All right, going back. Uh, tasteful cameo, tasteless cameo. Rebel Please be tasteful. Tasteful. Yeah, that'd be nice. But you want to know whose cameos, cameos are always tasteful? Stan Lee's. Yes. Always. Stan always. Lee. And Especially she was in that uh, strip club. <laughs> 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 All right. So we're getting a, a report from uh, GameSpot basically saying that Stanley has filmed several cameos for future films in the D- MCU. Makes sense. I mean, he's how old now? 90 92, 93, 93, I think. Yeah, close to that. The man's still kicking a lot of ass. I know. Sure, but he's old. People don't age well. Even if they're the richest people in the world, they die. I yeah. mean, even the even the richest billionaires, they die. They die all the time. Usually in their like their 80s. Stanley's amazing just cuz he's gotten to reach this age. He's like Betty White. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Basically. Betty White is like. Yeah, look at her. She's almost hundred, so I think. Yeah, she's, she's just killing it still. Well, I, I guess Stanley must have lived the uh, clean lifestyle or something. Yeah, he's doing something right. He's yeah. doing something right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We well, gotta go. We gotta interview Stanley. Be like, Stan, I don't want to know about Marvel. How the hell do you look so good at your age? <laughs> well, I mean, if well, any of you guys are going to Kamikaze, like. This guy over here. Yeah, I'm going to Kamikaze. What's up? Find him. <laughs> I will f- actually, I should ask that question. You should, do you it. You should interview Stan Lee because he's a cool guy. Just yeah, you it. should just be like, Stan, I don't even want to know about Marvel comic movies. So guys, if you, you like an interview of Stan Lee and post it on the Canons Radio, please make sure to um, send Chris all your needs for questions of Stan Lee on yes. Twitter. Mm-hmm. And, and please ask him uh, how what his secret is. I need to know. <laughs> It's what probably his Excelsior potion. It's probably L'Oreal. He probably it's worth yeah. it. <laughs> L'Oreal. <laughs> L'Oreal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I bet this article sounds really familiar to me for some strange reason. I feel like I've heard it before. Like he said that he was going to do it. Yeah. I think I'm, tr- I'm trying to remember which movie I was thinking of when he said that he was going to be making a boatload of cameos for the other movies. Well, I think it was either Iron Man three or Deadpool when it happened. Are you okay. talking about when he had, when like Stanley was kind of hinting? It's like, yeah, I'm gonna be filming a lot of cameos soon, so just look out for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember when I saw that article. Well, uh, I mean, they've got all these other movies already planned to like 2020, so there's plenty of movies he can still plus cameo in. plus his life story is apparently being developed into an action um, 
Yeah, I, I love movie. that. That's I right. That fact. <laughs> he, it's an action film. How is that even going like, to work? That's going to be amazing. I don't know, but I am interested to find out. Apparently, Fox Speaking of action movies, okay. John Wick 2. It's coming in February. It was a post release last week, which is kind of okay. It was an okay mm-hmm. poster. I, I don't care. I love John Wick. Yeah. John Wick is. They've built such a world in the brief, what is it, one hour movie? You had a flushed out world of John Wick. Um, it was an hour 40 minute movie. But anyway, the director <laughs> of John Wick 2, Chad Stalinsky, um, he, he's like he's he comes from a stuntman background and he helped direct the first John Wick movie with mm. another stuntman who's not working on this movie. Promises that the sequel will have twice the amount of action as the first movie. What do we think of an action packed John Wick 2? Um, if it's twice the amount of action, that's literally the entire movie. Pretty much. Because that yeah. was literally the movie. It's like 40 minutes of, of establishing the world, and then the rest was action. So if you're eliminating that, that's just going to be action the entire way. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's an awesome thing, because that action in that movie was great. Chet, action, good, bad. Both. Both? Both. Because... I, I, don't, I don't need that. I, I, you, sh- you should have said good, because action, like... John Wick action is the best action that's out there. Sure, it's the best action, but how much action is the audience going to tolerate in this movie? All of it. All, all of the action. <laughs> well, we're not talking about Transformers, but it's like it's <laughs> action shit. Yeah, fake we're explosions. About choreographed. <laughs> oh, cameras scene. you can actually understand? Cameras you can actually understand. Okay. <laughs> well, what, what was that movie? It was like about a bunch of guns. Uh, what was it? It was just nothing but guns. Like, he literally was, like, using a gun to open everything. And it was just done ridiculously. Like, nonstop action the entire movie. Um. I do not know where that came from, guys. I am sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know what kind of gun movie you're talking about. I'm sorry. <sighs> I wish It sounds familiar, movie. but... You, it does, right? Yeah, it really sounds familiar. Bullet something, I think. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It was Bullet. along the same lines of that, but it mm-hmm. was so much action, you never saw anything but him shooting things. Chris Lauer, your thoughts? I am probably one of the few people who have not seen the movie. <gasps> I wanted to... I actually wanted to see this movie, um, but it it never got around to it me and my eyes and watching it. But from what I've heard, it sounds like a great movie. And I would you love need to, to go see to therapy, it. sir, right now. <laughs> we are going to... After this is over, I'm going to get it on my iPad and we're going to watch it, all right? All right. Oh, hell yeah. All mm-hmm. right. I'm down. Well, well you three are going to watch it because I have to do something about the episode. <laughs> Guys, we're going to take another short break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the Netflix series Luke Cage for a little bit. And then we'll wrap up. See you guys. Woo-hoo. We'll come okay. Back. And we are back to Film Real. I'm your host, Matthew Wegg. And always, I have Chet Severn in front of me. Well, for two guests, Sandra Blake and Chris Lara. So we usually talk about movie stuff, and you know, the MCU is pretty popular now. We're going to shift gears, talk about some TV, specifically Netflix TV. Luke Cage is going to be streaming on Netflix this Friday. Finally. I can't wait. Yay. Who is excited? <laughs> Oh, I am this everyone in this room. <laughs> I am all of the excites. I will binge watch the entire weekend. Screw homework. Screw all my responsibilities. <laughs> binge watching. I'm that's all I'm going to do. I'm gonna yes. call out work. Everybody in this room excited for Luke Cage? Oh, hell yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm getting yeses all around. Yep. That's good. You know, uh, they also said that they were going to be doing, they're already started shooting on the new Jessica Jones. Yes. Really? So that's another uh, popular mar- two. Uh, MCU thing going on. And we got Luke, uh, not Luke Cage. We Iron that. Fist. Iron Fist. Yes. And Defenders. So, yeah, that will be the Defenders. The well, Defenders it, are coming. It'll also probably bring up Heroes for Hire, which is going to be Luke Cage and Iron Fist together. That's true. Which will be probably amazing since that was a great series. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Netflix. We're all excited for Luke Cage. Um, geez, I thought it was going to be actually longer. Well, I can make it much longer. So, it's real simple. <laughs> if the audience hasn't heard, Heroes for Hire is going to be like Mercenaries. So they're going to be hired to do jobs that are kind of questionable, unlike a lot of the other superheroes, so which will be Deadpool a lot here. more interesting mm-hmm. than some of the other stuff we're seeing around right now. I'm looking really forward to seeing some of the crazy stuff is done, and Jessica Jones will actually be part of that, since she will probably be their secretary, as uh, she was in the original. And then become secretary. Luke Cage's wife. Really? She was really the, like, who put all their things together, and they went out and did the thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, right. so it was actually really interesting. It was a great series, and it was... Some interesting dynamics are going to happen. If they pursue what's going to go across on the comics with this like, really famous run of what happened is 
Jessica actually gets attacked by the Green Goblin. Ah, in later oh. parts of it, Ooh. which will bring into the, the Spider-Man thing. Ooh, that'd so you be might nice. immediately bring into it where Luke Cage gets pissed off and he literally goes after Norman Osborn. Mm-hmm. Like, as Norman Osborn, not as the Green Goblin. And he starts a crazy war with him all across the city. Hmm. So we can, can get some that. really yeah. interesting stuff going on if they pursue that storyline. Yeah, if they do crossovers, that'd be great. All right. Focusing on the series that's going to be starting this Friday, what do we actually really expect from like the entire arc? Like, where do you think it's going to end? I'm thinking gang warfare because mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I hope they don't do the black exploitation that they did for the original. Yeah, where it was so oh my god racist that mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if anyone can tolerate it now. Do you think they're going to start off at Seagate Prison, like in the actual comics of Luke Cage's origins? I don't know. They you might. You see that in the trailer. Remember what? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. They, so, yeah, that's probably that the case. That really awesome Power Man nod, like the first issue, like, mm-hmm. I was just like, that was cool. I just Those really, really hope they don't give him the afro. I don't yeah, I hope not. <laughs> I, really, I don't think I really don't the want afro. them going That's back to like the seventies, and yeah. then like you see a flashback, and he's got the afro on, and he's got the ridiculous outfit with like the little vest. Yeah, no. this, the seventies oh for Marvel for the seventies was probably one of the worst times for them <laughs> because <laughs> they had the most awful costumes ever to exist. They got <laughs> they put they um, put Captain America on the sidelines and made him nomad. Which is just basically a stupid guy in a cape Ugh. that just punches people all day long. Now my question is, like, um, why? <laughs> Luke Cage, a Batman. This is <laughs> happening before, or after he meets Jessica. Oh, this is after. This after? is straight up after. Way after. I don't know how much after, okay. but uh, it's after. Okay, I think it's like a month. Did you guys see the other something. article that they said the reason that Luke Cage is actually coming out now is because of Jessica Jones? They yeah, were I yes. actually expecting that. Iron Fist to come out first. Yeah, yeah. it should have been that but way. But it's like Luke Cage is awesome, but it's like. Hey, people are saying Luke's, Luke Cage is awesome. We need to uh, like start rolling that shit right now. Well, that just means that we're going to get Iron Fist faster. Yeah, if oh. I if I remember correctly, Iron Fist was supposed to be before Jessica Jones, but they took too long for the casting. So yeah. they put so, Jessica Jones. First. Yeah, they put Jessica Jones up front, which was pretty easy because they found someone almost right away. And what then did Luke you guys Cage. think of Jessica Jones? I felt it really creepy for a lot of it. The ending was horrible. I didn't like, he the, didn't ending. like the ending. I, I didn't like finish it, actually. I still need to finish that. Oh, it's a great You haven't series. seen John Wick. You haven't finished Jessica Jones. Anything else like to admit to the uh, council table over here, How sir? about Daredevil? I have seen most of Daredevil. Oh, my <laughs> I God. Haven't, no. I haven't I, okay, I was out of <laughs> internet for a good 10 months. Oh, okay. Oh, that's fair okay, enough. Okay, okay. And I didn't have money to pay for stuff, so... Hence the reason why that whole gap between all those things. I was watching those things consecutively, okay. and then that sh- that crap happened, and so <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, why well I haven't you, seen it. You do know either way, we just have to give you shit because that's what we're supposed. Well, yeah, to. yeah, yeah, obviously. Like I would expect you know that stuff towards okay. me. At okay. all. We yeah. were just supposed to. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. part of it. So as right now, guys, we need to actually leave and hook Chris Lara up to a TV so he can experience all the stuff that he's missing. <laughs> so we're going to wrap this episode up right now. I got the chains. <laughs> all right. Whoa. So um, I have been your host, Matthew Wegg. You guys can follow me on all the social medias at Matthew Wegg. And I'm Chet Severn. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Chet Severn. I'm Xander Blake, and you can follow me at The Real Xander Blake. And I'm Chris Lara. You can probably find me on most social medias uh, under either Monkey Ruler or CJ Lara. And that will do it for our show today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please come back next Tuesday for our next episode.